Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of From the Mount, a podcast from the campus of Mount Perrin Christian School. I'm your host, Steve Kyle, on today's episode. And of course, you saw it in the description. You're you're probably not listening to this blind. You know exactly what we're talking about today. And uh, it's a it's an interesting, interesting subject about a culture of gratitude and generosity. That's what we're gonna we're gonna be talking about today. And it's one of those uh, subjects that there are lots of people who love to talk about it. Other people are like, uh, I know in churches at least it's not a popular topic. But we have another first time uh, guest on uh, the podcast, and this is another one on one. If you're a regular listener, you know that I have a handful of ones where it's just me and one other person. I just get the awesome privilege. We just get to chat. This is another one of those episodes, and it is not only just a one on one, but with a first time guest. But a a I'm sure she's listened to every episode we've ever done of From the Mount. Um, uh, but we have Miss Jennifer New on the podcast. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Yes, great. And some of you are listening. You know exactly who Jennifer New is. That's why you're listening to the episode, because in the description, it was like, hey, and we've got Jennifer New on. And people are like, oh, I love Jennifer New. <laughs> and then other people are like, ah. Oh, Jennifer oh, New, no. who's that? I know. Who is that? Or I actually I just hung up on, well, <laughs> on her the other day. But uh, um but but Jennifer, I think this is going to be a really interesting conversation because you know, I, I think and I'll get into this more in, in a minute in, in talking about this, the perspective I think you bring to it. When I say unique, it's terrible that it is unique in this environment, but it actually is unique in this environment, your perspective on this idea of gratitude and generosity. But before we get into all that, I want the people to know who you are. So I think it's really important that our listeners get to know our people. So if you're listening and you don't know who Jennifer New is outside of maybe her title, she can tell you um, she is our chief development officer here at Mount Perrin. It involves a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, Jennifer, tell everybody a little bit about who you are, both personally and professionally. Okay, so um, so I've been at Mount Perrin almost 18 years, and I've spent my entire career in fundraising prior to Mount Perrin. I did fundraising for social services, um, and it, it's 18 years has uh, both flown by and also been a long time. When I came to Mount Perrin, I had no children, and now I have a senior and a freshman, and um, we've been at every level of the school, and it's been a tremendous blessing both from a parent standpoint but also in my work to really be able to see uh, the ministry of Mount Perrin lived out every day. And so that has strengthened my commitment to the mission and just my love for this place and for making sure that uh, every teacher and coach and director has the resources that they need yeah. in order to carry out the work. So were you were, were you on this campus when you first took your job? Was it on this main campus yes. when we moved here? So it was yes. right after they opened this campus, <clears throat> or not long Correct. after you were yes. here. Yep. And have you always been doing chief development? Have you been in that area ever since coming here. Absolutely. And some of the things that were immediately on the plate when I came were starting a football program. There was no football. So it was you know, raising the resources to start football here and um, purchasing the Murray Arts Center. And we went from there and had a great capital, successful capital campaign, building a stadium and the Innovation Center. And during that time, I think one of the most, really the most important accomplishment has been really growing a culture of gratitude and generosity at Mount Perrin because um, that was really a new concept, was not necessarily ingrained in the culture at Mount Perrin. And so that's been really kind of the foundation of what I do. Um, the projects will come and go. The priorities will change over time. Uh, yeah. But having that um, culture of Biblical gratitude and generosity is so central to who we are and living out our Christian faith. And so um, that's what I'm probably most proud of and feel like we've made the greatest strides yeah. in since I've been here. Uh, a couple things. So if you're listening, you're immediately going, 
man, is this podcast going to go in the direction of at some point someone's going to ask me for something? Like there's going to be a QR code that comes on the screen if I'm watching or a, a website. And, and believe it or not, and my second comment's going to have to do with, with this. Of course, this has nothing to do with we're not asking this podcast episode or any podcast episode we do about this subject is ever going to be an ask of anybody. That, that's certainly not the goal. And, and even the, the reason I can have great confidence is I've been doing Christian education for 30 years. I've been at a number of other private Christian schools, and I've met lots of development people and people who raise money and, and funds and resources. And and again, I'm not saying this of, of everybody and not that any of those people I've ever met are listening to this podcast— but it, but it's rare that you you'll meet someone in here who their their primary focus and goal is is hey listen my job here is just to raise tons of money my job is and, and that's what motivates me every day how much money I can raise and building stuff and 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 then oh yeah well yeah we're a Christian school and yeah I mentioned stuff like oh and I I attach a Bible verse to a one of the early conversations early on I mean some of the earliest conversations Jennifer you and I had were about ministry they had nothing to do with generosity and giving it was about Christian life. It was about, I, rem, I vividly remember coming over here and going, wow, that's weird that our chief development officer is really involved in, in the, the spiritual growth of our school. It's important to her. It's a, but you also have that same perspective about your job. It's not about asking for money. Like, I just want to go out and get the most money. It genuinely is about creating this culture of biblical generosity and gratitude, rooted mm-hmm. and grounded in Scripture, that our people understand that above anything else, that it's just not about how much money you give or what name's on a building. or, And that's, i, I got to be honest with you, that's a, 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 it is refreshing. And again, it shouldn't be in what we mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. But just so you know, it's not the norm when you run into people, even in Christian circles, that that's their priority. And so hopefully you'll keep listening so you can hear from someone who is around this thing all the time and, and is really going to begin to give us a snapshot of what, what generosity and gratitude really looks like, even in a, in a community just like ours. So, Because I'll be honest with you, and I we were talking pre-podcast recording here, and I was like, you know— not many people like to be asked for money. You know, when you think about that, it's like the pastor never wants to talk about tithe on Sunday morning because here we go again. You know, mm-hmm. pastor wants to raise his salary, and that's what you do. You ask the people for more money. Or the school just wants something new, or teachers, you know, admin wants more, you know. So, so they're just going to ask for, for lots of stuff. And I c- kind of brought that up. Is that the case? And, and you kind of give me a different perspective. Kind of share a little bit about the perspective that you shared with me. Yeah. So, you know, I look at philanthropy and, and of course, when we're talking about philanthropy, that is um, that is financial giving. And we'll talk about the different forms of generosity and, and financial giving and philanthropy as one. But I look at it as, um, you know, money. I'm actually not really a money person. I'm more of a relationship person. And I think that um, when it comes to my work, um, most of the people that I work with and really in the in the school environment, um, generosity is an opportunity to them. And it's an opportunity to support a mission um, in whatever form they are able. I, I, I think that most of the people are motivated by commitment to mission. And, and our mission is extremely strong. Um, but as we prepare servant leaders, part of ser- servanthood is generosity. And so I feel like in our school community, not only is it my job to make sure the resources are there for the teachers and everyone to do their job without having to worry about those resources, whether it's facilities or finances or whatever it is, volunteers to make the work happen. It's also important to me that we are, as we're preparing servant leaders, that we are training in them um, ways to live out a generous life and ways to um, be servants in the kingdom. And so um, I think that one of the things that's really important that we that we look at is this the relationship between gratitude and generosity. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things that God builds in us, right? And one of them is this loop, this relationship between gratitude and generosity. And one of the things that I've noticed about giving people over the years is that it stems from this 
um, knowledge that everything that we have, that they have, if they're a donor or a volunteer or whatever, um, really is something that's been given to them by God, right? They're just stewards of it. And they they are so grateful for it that they feel the necessity to share, yeah. to invest, to give it back to God in a sense. And so there really is it, – it, you cannot find someone who's a generous person who is not also a very grateful person who recognizes the blessings in their life. And God's placed in them a generous heart, and 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 they act upon that. So there is this loop. And so, what I like to see, and what I want us to create in our in our children and in our culture, is a practice of gratitude. And just um, you know, you hear a lot about that. People keep gratitude journals. There's you know various things, but I think that from that pours generosity. And so that is a really important part of um, inspiring generosity is focusing on the gratitude piece of it. Um, For us at Mount Perrin, you know, I look around and, and this could be applied anywhere, not just at Mount Perrin, but most of us sit under the tr- the shade of trees that were planted by people before us. Right. We're enjoying things that were Um, done for us, prior to us, and oftentimes by people with less means than what we have, by sweat, um, you know, whatever it is, sacrifice. And we now are enjoying that. And so when we take a moment and recognize the benefits that we have that we're enjoying today, it should inspire us um, to want to provide that for the future, to make sure that we're good stewards of it, that we take care of what people have done, but that we also expand it, make it better, invest in it, um, and, and, and realize that it's our turn to do the same thing, sure. to pay it forward. Yeah. So recognizing that what we have has been provided by others and especially by God, that begins the process of generosity yeah, and yeah. acting on generosity. You know, that I've always, and I remember, I don't know how long ago when 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 I began to, and it, I wasn't a kid, I think I was maybe even college when I really began to study in Bible college this idea that, honestly, when you really think about it, and I think we disconnect, we say it, but we don't recognize that anything we have, I mean, I don't, I don't care how hard you've worked to build the career you have, the job, maybe you started this small business and it's exploded in your fantastically successful. And even in that, we can sometimes forget that that God's the one who gave you the ability, the drive, the motivation, the blessing, the opportunity. The The only reason that you got up this morning with breath in your lungs is because he allowed you to get up and do that. And so what we have, and we talked about, we, we're going to do an episode on just stewardship, but what we have is not even ours. And it's easier, when you start to recognize that, it's easier to just give away stuff that's not yours, or to just it is because I'm mm-hmm. like, well, I ain't mine. The company mm-hmm. owns it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you can you get a pen, you get this, you get that. Why? Because I'm not giving away all my stuff. But but when all my stuff is that way, then it's just really easy. Oh, you want to borrow something on my garage? Yeah, it's not mine. God gave me the opportunity. So I think that's a really powerful thing that if you're listening, that you maybe you're you're running on your 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 little Peloton tread or your you're riding in your your really nice car. It's great. You're at your house. You're you're running on something that's really God's. Like He's giving you this opportunity, and and uh, that alone should kind of, you said it, motivate us to God. I'm so grateful with gratitude that that this I can't help but but be able to do that, and that's certainly rooted in in Scripture. So I I, I love that point. Um, and then of course I think you were you were talking about this idea that gratitude, of course, is this idea when I'm it prepares every part of me. To, to want to give, not even just financially. Right, exactly. And I, I think that one of the important things, particularly as we're talking about raising kids and teaching them to live out a life of generosity, it's important to talk about the different forms of generosity. And, you know, one reason is raising kids, but also because all of our resources are different, right? The Bible talks gives the example, the parable of the widow's might, and that somebody's gift may be more valuable, even though tangibly it's less, because of the sacrifice is greater. And so one of the things that um, that we try to be sure 
that we recognize is that all gifts are valuable. Um, it just it just depends. And so we look at things like participation. So it may not be the greatest dollar amount gift, but it's it's extremely valuable um, in that the participation or the loyalty of giving. We also that that is you know when it comes to giving, but we but in in children they don't have control over their own resources. Right. They don't have control over their money. They don't really have control over their time either. And so I think as we start out looking at the different forms of generosity and preparing kids to live out a generous life as they get older and as they do have more resources. We should focus on some of the maybe less obvious forms of generosity. So words of encouragement, teaching kids how to be lavish with words of encouragement and kindness to other people. One of the things that I think we do really well here, and as we come up on the holidays, this is a really important time to talk about hospitality. There are so many examples in the Bible of various mm-hmm. forms of generosity, and, and Jesus and, and many others in the Bible gave us examples of different forms of generosity, and over and over again, hospitality is one of them. And hospitality is a really important form of generosity because it's an intimate form of generosity. And so you're able to you know, invite someone into your home or provide something that you've prepared, that you've put time into. Usually hospitality doesn't involve a big outlay of resources, but it leaves an impression on how you make someone feel. Yeah. That they feel important. They feel that you thought of them. They feel that they belong. And so that's, that's right. a really critical um, form of of generosity. Another one that maybe would not be so obvious is um, something that I think we could really benefit from right now in today's culture, oh, and sure. it's benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I think that if we teach our children to give people the benefit of the doubt, to assume the best of intentions, um, that that feeling of generosity, it is an act of generosity to give someone the benefit of the doubt. Even when you think maybe there's a grievance or maybe when you give someone the benefit of the doubt and you assume the best of intentions in them, that is an act of generosity and of grace. And that's what God gives us. Sure. We get a tremendous yeah. amount of grace and mercy. And so we're called to do the same thing to other people. That's right. And in a culture where we jump to conclusions, where we make accusations so quickly and so freely, I want to see us as parents, as educators, model for our children, giving other people the benefit of the doubt. Um, that that can lead to so many great things down the line. Um, yeah, and, and, and less... Uh, uh, conflict, less misunderstandings, just by simply doing that. And unfortunately, right. we live in a I want to be right, I am right, my perspective, my way kind of culture. And and so I do. I think that's a that's a big one that people don't automatically go, oh yeah, well that's that's generosity. That's the uh, that that's where that comes from. So I, I think it's great. That's a great point. Right. And there's and then you know probably the two I guess most obvious. And of course, there's many more of generosity that forms of generosity we could talk about. But, um, you know, as a school that's that's missionally focused on preparing servant leaders, we we depend and we talk a lot to our students and we're training them to be volunteers, to to raise their hand and serve in various ways, whether it's at church, in their community, um, at school, at home. We want to be generous with our time. That's we right. we want to – it can be done at various levels. Some people sit on boards and they volunteer their time in a leadership way. Some people are truly rolling up their sleeves and serving in a, in a, in a soup kitchen or, or something like that. But we want to train our kids that um, serving others – um, really feeds into that gratitude and generosity loop, right? You're, you are, you become through service. You become more grateful for what you have, and it just continues to build in them that feeling of gratitude and generosity. The more invested they are from a time perspective, 
and and just being in different circumstances where they can feel grateful for what they have, the more it builds in them that desire to serve and to give. Yeah. And so that that volunteerism, the the servanthood piece of generosity is super critical um, and and something that really you just have to have time and we all have the same amount of that resource. Yes, yeah, we do. And, and I think it's worth repeating. You mentioned this, but, you know, especially with our youngest ones too, th- this is something that has to be modeled. Mm-hmm. It is something, you know, a lot of times it's, hey, I dropped my kid off to do that service project or, yeah, hey, what time do I drop them off and pick them up and yet I'm going to go... And we we are we are sending really strong messages to our kids. I get. I'm not saying we have to be at everything our kids volunteer for and the things they sign up for. Absolutely not. But but what's so awesome is I get the privilege of being a part of a lot of service projects we do, whether it's our Serve Saturdays or to see the number of parents that number one come on a regular basis that are repeat, and to see the way it impacts their kids to to work alongside to volunteer alongside their parent to to be a part of it. They're, they're watching what we're doing, not just what we're allowing them to do. And, and, and I think it's really powerful if, and again, I know we, we're, we're busy, but boy, if there are those opportunities, you can serve along with your kids, or maybe you're doing some service. Your kids can't even make it, but you're like, well, no, mom and dad still go. We're going to serve at this, whatever, and you're actually too young, and we can't. The message is still, wow, my, man, my mom and dad make time out every, what, twice a month to go serve and modeling that, especially for our youngest kids, is there's almost nothing when it comes to developing that kind of gratitude and, and service mentality. There's almost nothing better that we can do. Talking about it's one thing. Doing it with them is is a completely another level, I think, for, for that. Absolutely. And don't look at it as another thing that you have to do, because the truth of the matter is, and this I find this to be the case with all forms of gratitude and generosity, is it comes back to you a hundredfold. Research shows that people who serve, people who are generous, people who are are grateful, they are happier, they are healthier. Serving reduces stress. It's it has great effects on the immune system. All the research is there. So there are tremendous benefits to leading your life in this way, not to mention, as you point out, the way that we're training up our yeah, kids. Yeah, and and God knew all that. You know, that's the interesting. He built it it's in not us. like, yeah, exactly. Yes. It's not like science is like, oh, that's look what we've. God's like, well, this is kind of what I've, what I, how I've designed you to be, and where you're, where you, your, your, your most ideal, where your spirit most is in tune with His spirit, and when your heart is in most in tune with His heart, and when. I, it's no shock or surprise that all of what you just said is the reality when our lives are are, are modeled that way, for sure. So yeah, absolutely, um, and you know, and obviously, I, you know, I want to touch on just finally um, financial giving. It, it is a form of generosity. Is one of our resources. The Bible speaks of giving and talks about our first fruits. Um, giving is meant to be a sacrifice. It's giving is an act of trust in God to provide for our needs. It's an act of worship. That's why he calls us to give our first fruits. It's not, hey, hey, school or hey, church or hey, God, here's my extra. No, it's meant to be an act of sacrifice and worship. And when we do that, um, I think that it, it, it brings up in us a, a different a different feeling about our giving, not just a check in a box, but truly an investment in something that we care about um, and in God's kingdom. So, um, you know, as we talked about, financial giving is relative. Everybody has a different ability to yeah. give. And people really have to um, pray about what they care about and, and what's right for them. In giving, no one is gonna, no one's gonna say that, uh, you know, as a prescription. This is what everyone can do. That's really an issue between of the heart between you and God, and and figuring that out. Um, but it is important that we value all giving, and um, that we look at different ways of recognizing all types right. of giving, and that we know that. There are, if you look around, you know a lot of people who live a generous life. You probably don't know how much they're giving financially, but you probably see the evidence in other ways of a generous life. And so um, 
you know, all of that is equally as important. And for some people who have been blessed abundantly, it can play out in significant financial giving. And all of that's important, um, but it's not the only thing. Sure. Yeah. No, nor is it the, the we don't. Uh, the assumption might be, well, but it's probably what you would prefer or want the most. Like if you're talking about, if you're going to be honest, Jennifer, you know, you— it's not the only thing, but boy, wouldn't it be if it was the your favorite thing? Or and 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 the great there might be places out there where I believe that to be the case, where it's just like honestly, we're going to see all this stuff, but just get out your checkbooks and let's start writing some money for these children, a- instead of no, actually, we're gonna. It comes down ultimately, who do I trust? Who right. who do I trust? When I when I say God, I completely trust you with resources, future to meet my needs, to meet the school needs. God, all I'm going to do is be faithful in giving like you've asked me to do, whether that's my time, whether that's in the benefit of the doubt, whether that's in service to other people, whatever it is, God, or or my financial resource. God, I have to trust that you're going to work because I just going to you know, it's what your word says. And and that's your perspective. It's our, our school's perspective. It is genuinely not about it. And we're thankful God has provided. He has given abundantly and provided abundantly in, in amazing ways. But um, yeah, I think it's really important that we, we do focus on that kind of giving and the right kind of cheerful giving. Right. And and that's the other thing it is. Um, it is giving with an attitude of gratitude, right? It's not an obligatory thing. It's not a begrudging thing. Um, it really is pouring out of that heart of gratitude. And when you approach it from that standpoint, um, while yes, it is, um, it is sometimes a sacrifice, but it is an unselfish act. If done right, you are inconveniencing yourself for someone else, right? No matter which form of generosity it is, sure. that's what makes it valuable. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, and, that is important. And and I think that it's just a demonstration of our gratitude for how faithful God has been to us, the way he's provided for us, and we're just returning it to him. Yeah, I I, I think now I've had two girls go through Mount Perrin that graduated here. They didn't go through. I mean, one soft, sophomore through senior year and then eighth grade through senior. We came to this campus long after you did, and we've been here eight years. And, and of course, my girls were blessed by an, an unbelievable experience because of all those who came before, because of all those who sacrificially give, because of all those who understood that, hey, I'm given to something that my kids will will never probably experience, but I know I'm given to the kingdom work. I'm giving in, and I'm trusting God to do great work in that. And so my girls doing what they're doing right now, living lives, desiring to serve the Lord, all of that that was in, helped to be reinforced here through and by the giving sacrificially, not just of resources, but of time and, and prayer and sacrifice of all the people that have gone before. And I, I'm humbled by that. I'm thankful for that. My girls look back and go, man, I'm where I'm at because of people I've never met before for, for the kingdom. And, and and we're kind of in the same place now for, for us looking forward. Right, right. And it's, you know, it's interesting and and we didn't we didn't really talk about or say that we were going to talk about this, but I think, you know, in in Christian giving in particular, you know, we are we are to give without expectation, right? We are to give yeah. freely, we are to give trusting God, but also, you know, hopefully you're doing your homework but giving to an organization that you trust has the right priorities right. and is going to be a good steward of of, of your investment. Um, but I also think that there are, and you do it without recognition. Um, but in some cases, and and this is you know this is a, a topic of debate and Christian debate. One of the things that I've wrestled with at Mount Perrin when I first came and and continue to. I mean, this is an internal struggle for me is. You know, we from time to time will, based on um, uh, either a, a, a staff person who's been very significant or oftentimes a very significant financial investment or gift to the school, we have named buildings, facilities, various sure. things. I can honestly tell you in every case, none of them came with a gift asking for something to be named. It's something that 
I and others had to convince them to allow us to do. And so that's how I know those gifts were made with the right intentions. But one of the reasons that we've chosen to do that on occasion is that for us as a young school, knowing and acknowledging the people that God has worked through to make things possible helps us establish a history for our school But it also gives our students and our staff and faculty something tangible to look around. And as we tour people through our school, we can say, you know, here's, you know, the Mr. Smith who did this and such for the school. And we can make examples and express our gratitude for the way that God's worked through his people in our ministry. And I feel like That establishment of history, but also just that tangible recognition of the many investments that have been made really helps build that culture of gratitude and generosity because giving is also contagious, right? Generosity and service is contagious. So when you see other people, whether that's a parent or a teacher or a leader in the school or anybody who is giving of themselves in some form of generosity, it inspires other people to do the same thing. And so a lot of times I'll hear people say, well, if they can do that, I can do that. Like you kind of have a picture of yourself relative to other people and what their abilities are. It really inspires other people to do the same. And so as I've wrestled through that over the years, I have found that it's brought great value to our to our school culture. I think it's something we have to handle very delicately and do it with the right of right intentions, use it appropriately. But I do think that um, for us, it's been instrumental in creating that culture of gratitude and generosity that's propelled us forward and 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 built a great, yeah. I think, culture at the school. That's right. I, I agree. So uh, put <laughs> kind of put a bow on this. If I'm listening, I'm a parent listening. I'm just somebody listening. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're not, I, I don't want you to be like, and if you'd like to give, call no. 1-800. No, I know <laughs> no. you would do it. But again, people that know you know that's not you. That That's not what you do. That's not how you do it or why you do it. How, what would you write to that young family who's listening to the the, the the alumni who might be driving listening to this episode right now, what's something practical maybe that I would be able to walk away from and go, man, I, I want to get there. I want to get to that place where I do have that. I feel that way about it. I get to that. What bit of, of brief advice might you give, Jen? Well, I think it's just a question of recognizing that everyone can be generous, right? Sure. Whether you're young or you're old, you're rich or you're poor, A lot of people think that being generous is reserved only for rich people, and it's not. It's just not. It's not the case, and and we have example after example in the Bible um, of how to lead a generous and grateful life. And so um, I think the one thing I would say is, is that generosity is for everyone. It's not just for certain people, and um, our Christian walk calls us to lead a life of generosity and gratitude. And so yeah. that really begins by, in your prayer life, beginning with gratitude and and counting your blessings and being grateful for the things that we have and recognizing that it's all through God's provision. I think that that is practically where it has to begin as an exercise and a practice. And the more that you, you know, it, it is it is a muscle that has to be exercised. So the right. more that you practice yeah. that posture of gratitude in all areas of your life, particularly in your prayer life, then I think from that, the generosity pours and you can start looking at the different forms of generosity and where you can practice that in your life and as we've talked about. But it is important to know that it applies to everyone. Yeah. And I think a lot of people think that, oh, you know, that's not for me. I'm, yeah. you know, living you paycheck me, to yeah. paycheck or whatever. If you want me to be generous, you give yeah. me more money to give. Yeah, that's yeah. not, that, that's just not, simply not the case. Yeah. Um, everyone has something to offer. And, and in fact, we're called to. Yeah. So so if you're listening, I, and that's that's great advice, practical. And and, and then ask yourself, where, where are you being generous now? Where are your kids, your grandkids, whoever it is, where are they watching and seeing you engage in this kind of generosity? And again, 
take financial even off the table. Where are other ways that they're seeing this gratitude and generosity? How are you? If you're like, man, I'm really struggling to find. Then then you got you got some work to do. Digging into your prayer life and the Word and and the great news is you can start being generous today. I mean, with your time and your resources and your talent and 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 the benefit of the doubt and your encouragement and all those ways we we can we can start and it, it can it can start immediately. So. Jen, thanks for being on uh, this episode. I, honestly, it's been interesting. We've got ideas already. There'll be some more coming up. And right now we're recording this. I don't know when you're listening to it. During the kind of the holiday season, Thanksgiving's coming up, Christmas is coming up, and it's that time of year where we're most in tune to that. Right. So I certainly hope that we're aware of that. But if you're listening to this in the middle of June, generosity is a year-round, all-the-time kind of way of, of living. And so... Um, but, but boy, what a great time to, to focus on it. If you have any questions or ideas for future podcast episodes or questions about episodes we've had, you can email us at from the mount at mtparentschool.com. That's from the mount at mtparentschool.com. And thank you for listening to another episode of From the Mount.